Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. Cloud computing has gained popularity in a very short time and has become a key driving force for numerous businesses today. A model where a third party vendor hosts and maintains core infrastructure, including software, hardware, servers, and storage for a customer is called infrastructure as a service. The customers receive a highly scalable environment for their applications and are only charged for the infrastructure they use. The public cloud providers with the biggest market share are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform in the infrastructure as a service and platform as a service sectors. It's important to note that all these platforms are not the same. You should compare them based on the size, goals, budget, and expected growth rate of your company. Each one of them offers varied features, and as a result, one vendor may be more compatible with your business model than the others. So keep watching for a more comprehensive overview of all three of these cloud providers. As always, if you have any questions as you watch this video, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Now, AWS has dominated the market ever since it entered the sector in 2006 in infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Microsoft has remained strong in software as a service, and GCP has artificial intelligence as its main strength. Looking into Amazon Web Services, the vast tool set with the breadth and depth of its services continues to be the key strength for AWS. Amazon's capabilities remain unmatched with translating its scale into economic benefits for its customers. With an intensive infrastructure, AWS allows data delivery on a global scale and deploys it faster without affecting the accessibility of performance or service. It supports all operating systems and focuses on the public cloud instead of a hybrid or private cloud. It offers services and compute database and storage solutions, app integration, developer management and engagement tools, machine learning and predictive analytics, and business productivity tools. Now let's look at Microsoft Azure. It's a preferred choice for enterprises that have had a relationship with Microsoft. With their exceptional cloud infrastructure, enterprises needs are taken care of in one place, including software, productivity, and cloud computing. With the ideal combination of Azure, Teams, and Office 365, Microsoft is a safe bet for customers with hybrid cloud vendors. Azure provides different services, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service, and supports operating systems, including the Linux and Microsoft Windows. It comes with built-in and ready-to-run server apps that support languages like .NET, Java, PHP, Node.js, and Python. Microsoft Azure offers DevOps, blockchain technology, Internet of Things integration, big data and predictive analytics, scalable data warehousing, and game and app development. Now let's dig into the Google Cloud Platform. A relatively new but well-funded Google Cloud Platform is an infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and serverless platform provider with proficiency in open source technologies especially containers. Technologies like Kubernetes for orchestration and Istio Service Mesh are on their way to becoming industry standard. GCP draws corporate customers with their profound technical expertise and its tools in artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, and data analytics. Services include SMB business analytics and AI, app development, data management and storage, and productivity and workload management tools. Now let's compare these three different providers from a computational standpoint. At the core of all of these platforms lie similar basic capabilities about flexible compute, storage, and networking. Elements like compliance, uh, self-service, identity management, plus security, instant provisioning, and auto scaling are all common. So let's look at features that make them stand out. Looking at AWS from a compute standpoint, the Elastic Cloud Compute, or EC2, is the primary service used by AWS. Elastic Compute Cloud offers bare metal instances, GPU instances, high performance computing, auto scaling, etc., etc., for Windows and Linux. 
Amazon's container services offer options that support Kubernetes, Docker, and Fargate services. These help to automate server and manage cluster while using containers. AWS compute features include AWS Beanstalk, LightSail, AWS Serverless Application Repository, AWS Batch, VMware Cloud for AWS, AWS Lambda, AWS Outposts, and Elastic Load Balancing. Looking at Microsoft Azure from the compute standpoint, the cloud-based compute service for Microsoft Azure is called Virtual Machines and offers a range of solutions like development, testing, data center extensions, and app deployments. It's based on an open source platform that's compatible with Windows and SQL Server, Linux, IBM, Oracle, SAP, along with hybrid cloud capabilities and integrated support for Microsoft software. Azure offers two container services. While it's based on Kubernetes, the container services also use Docker Hub and Azure Container Registry for management. Other features include Service Fabric, Platform as a Service, Azure Batch, and Function as a Service. Now let's look at Google Cloud from a compute perspective. Google's compute engine offers custom and predefined machine types, Linux and Windows support, per second billing, carbon neutral infrastructure and automatic discounts, that use half the energy of typical data centers. It supports both Kubernetes and Docker containers. Other GCP compute functions include Google Map Engine, Instant Groups, Graphic Processing Unit, and Native. Now that we've looked at them from a compute perspective, let's do a storage comparison between these three cloud providers. Expansive storage is one of the main benefits of cloud computing. All the platforms offer different types of databases and backup plans. AWS storage services include Simple Storage Service, also known as S3, for object storage, Elastic Block Storage, also known as EBS for persistent block storage for use with EC2, and Elastic File System, also known as EFS, for file storage. Other products include Storage Gateway and Snowball to transfer petabytes of data in situations where Internet transfer is not practical. Amazon's backup feature is Glacier, which is offered at very low rates. Moreover, Storage Gateway can be used to easily set up backup and archive processes. AWS provides a number of SQL supported databases, an Elastic Cache features for additional memory, and a data migration service as well. For Microsoft Azure, its primary storage service is Blog Storage for REST-based object warehousing of unstructured data. For large-scale data storage and high-volume workloads, they offer queue storage and data lake store solutions. Their database options are extensive. The SQL support they provide is beyond storage. For the companies that use Microsoft SQL Server for their enterprise, their server stretch database is a hybrid that offers on and off-premises storage. They actually offer backup service along with site recovery and archive storage services. Looking at Google Cloud, GCP provides basic storage. Their storage service is what they offer customers in the computing department. Cloud storage is its unified object storage service and it also has a persistent disk option, similar to AWS Snowball. It offers a transfer appliance as well as online transfer services. They offer both SQL through Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner, and also no SQL database support through Cloud Bigtable and Cloud Data Store. There are no backup and archive services available at this time. Next, we're going to look at some of the key tool comparisons between these three cloud providers. Going forward, the key points of differentiation for all of the cloud providers will be machine learning, AI, Internet of Things, and serverless computing. Let's look at how these platforms compare when it comes to these key tools. Amazon leads in this area as well with the longest list of services. SageMaker allows for training and deploying machine learning models. Lex is the engine that powers Alexa. AWS recognition for image recognition and Greengrass IoT messaging service. Lambda serverless computing lets you be completely untethered. AWS's Gluon is an open source deep learning library for developers and non-developers both to build and swiftly train neural networks without having to know AI programming. 
Looking at Azure, Azure does not have the long list of AI enhanced tools that AWS does. Rather, they've developed tools that perform very niche functions. Along with machine learning and a bot service, Azure also offers serverless computing services called Functions. It has many management and analytic services that fall under IoT. Azure's tools also support on-premises Microsoft software. The Visual Studio projects are hosted by Visual Studio Team Services on Azure. Looking at Google Cloud, Google feels strongly about AI and machine learning. Google's open source software library, TensorFlow, makes them a leader in building machine learning applications. AWS has also adopted TensorFlow. It offers APIs for natural speech, language, translation, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's have a look at these three cloud providers from a pricing standpoint. In 2017, AWS shifted from by the hour to by the second pricing for its EC2 and DBS services. While it provides a price calculator, it's advisable to use a third party cost management app to navigate through the costing. Azure has an equally complicated price structure due to its software licensing options and use of situation-based discount. Expert guidance is recommended and the pricing is situational in an attempt to accommodate bespoke customer needs. Google Cloud has a customer-friendly pricing structure. They try to beat competitors' pricing and offer steep discounts to gain more business. Google's free tier incentive includes one F1 micro instance per month for up to one year. This platform offers ease of navigation and budget friendliness with the promise of potential growth. So if your decision is based solely on the pricing of cloud vendors, then it's highly recommended to analyze each project to get the best cost. Now we're going to compare the advantages and the disadvantages between these three platforms. The scope of Amazon's operation really gives it the edge in the market with its platform configuration options, monitoring and policy features, security, and trustworthiness. It has been the market share leader in cloud infrastructure as a service for over 10 years. AWS's complicated pricing structure is a concern for many enterprises. While AWS offers many features, the scalability of its offering can be difficult with a large number of features. Also, certain industries may not opt for AWS as they constantly expand and compete in a growing array of industries like healthcare and financial sectors. Azure markets itself as enterprise ready for companies that already use Microsoft on-premise systems, such as Windows Server, System Center, and Active Directory.net, as well as others. Existing Microsoft customers get significant discounts off service contracts. The fact that they're increasingly advancing with open source technologies is another plus. Now there have been unsatisfied customers when it comes to technical support and field solution architects, thus slowing down Azure adoption and customer spending on the platform. Google Cloud Platform has a strong presence in the open source community, as well as it appeals to companies that are into big data, analytics, and machine learning. Google has struggled to step into the enterprise market. It's looked at as a secondary option instead of a strategic cloud partner. Their focus area is supporting pre-cloud businesses and IT processes. Going back to the start of the video, the best cloud provider for you is really going to depend on your present needs and future growth. The cloud provider needs can even vary from project to project even. A multi-cloud strategy can lessen the vendor lock-in risks and offer more choice in features and services. All three platforms offer on-demand pricing, a free tier, great support, and an emphasis on security. It's probably best to choose AWS if you're a large company because it's more mature and offers the widest range of functionality with a rich collection of tools as well as has the widest global reach. This is not always the best option for smaller companies who are looking for a more personal relationship with their vendor. Look into choosing Microsoft Azure if you're looking for hybrid solutions. Existing .NET code will work on Azure and your server environment will connect to Azure. So this can make it easy for first time cloud migration. This can be deemed pretty ideal for developers and startups. You're probably gonna wanna choose Google Cloud Platform if you value innovation more than reach. Google is aggressively targeting its shortcomings by partnering with Cisco, which is known for the enterprise. It has made phenomenal progress with certain customers 
especially with its Kubernetes and machine learning expertise. So there you have it. There is an in-depth look at the comparisons between Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. Which one of these cloud providers is the most interesting to you? Feel free to let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching.